In the year 1404, a child was born into the world, oblivious of the dark destiny that awaited him. This child, named Gilles de Rey, was born into a life of privilege and opulence, his family being one of the wealthiest in all of France. Tragedy struck early in his life when he was orphaned, leaving him the sole heir to an immense fortune and vast lands. Despite these adversities, Gilles grew up to become a man of considerable stature. He was married off at a young age, securing even more wealth and power. His military prowess led him to fight alongside the legendary Joan of Arc, earning him a reputation as a valiant warrior. But beneath the surface, something sinister was brewing. While the world saw a nobleman, a brave soldier, and a wealthy landowner, something much darker was being cultivated. Little did the world know beneath the veneer of nobility and valor lurked a monster waiting to be unleashed. As Gilles de Reyes's life progressed, so did his descent into the abyss of monstrosity. After the dust of his military career had settled, Gilles found himself ensnared by the allure of an opulent lifestyle. His castle walls echoed with the laughter of jesters and the strumming of harps. The air was heavy with the scent of exotic spices and the finest wines. His was a life of grandeur, of endless feasts and flamboyant parties, where nobility from far and wide were drawn to his lavish displays of wealth. Yet beneath the surface of this extravagant existence, his coffers were bleeding dry. Each grandiose feast, each extravagant display, was a nail in the coffin of his once formidable fortune. The gold was dwindling, the silver tarnishing, and with it, Gilles de Rey's world was beginning to crumble. But it was amidst this fiscal decay that the first ominous whispers of his darkness began to stir. Gilles became fascinated, obsessed even with the occult. He sought out alchemists and sorcerers, those who lived on the fringes of society, shrouded in secrecy and mystery. He yearned to delve into the unseen world, to harness powers beyond the ken of ordinary men. He poured what remained of his wealth into these pursuits, trading gold for cryptic texts and ancient artifacts. His castle, once filled with the laughter of jesters and the clinking of wine glasses, now echoed with the murmuring of incantations and the clattering of alchemical apparatus. And so, Gilles de Rey, once a respected nobleman and war hero, was spiraling further into the abyss. His fascination with the occult was becoming an obsession, his castle a fortress of dark arts. The man who had once stood tall, a beacon of bravery on the battlefield, was now a puppet in the hands of sorcerers, his soul ensnared by the allure of the unknown. With his fortunes dwindling, Gilles de Rais was drawn deeper into the shadowy world of the occult, setting the stage for his horrifying crimes. The depths of Gilles de Rais's depravity came to light in a reign of terror that would shock the world. This once respected nobleman, a companion in arms to Joan of Arc, would become infamous for his monstrous acts. His targets were often young boys, the most vulnerable of society, whom he lured into his castle with promises of education and a better life. The reality, however, was a living nightmare. The children were subjected to unthinkable torture and abuse before being brutally murdered. The sheer number of victims is a chilling testament to Gilles de Reyes's savagery. Some estimates suggest that he may have killed hundreds, but the exact number remains shrouded in the mists of history. His reign of terror was a dark period in France's history, a time when innocence was stolen and lives were extinguished in the most horrifying manner. The once revered nobleman had now become a name associated with unspeakable horrors. The reign of terror, however, could not last forever. Justice was looming on the horizon. As whispers of sinister deeds spread across the land, the disappearances could no longer be ignored. An investigation was launched, leading to the chilling discovery that pointed to the nobleman, Gilles de Reis. His capture sent shockwaves through society, shattering the illusion of nobility. The trial that followed was a spectacle, unraveling the grim tapestry of his crimes. His confession, a chilling narrative of monstrous acts, echoed in the hallowed halls of justice, leaving a lasting imprint on those who heard it. The executioner's blade marked the fall of the beast, a grim but necessary end. Gilles de Reyes's death was a stark reminder of the grim reality, that beneath the veneer of honor and nobility, darkness can lurk. 
Gilles de Reyes's life serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath a facade of nobility and honor.